Let's get into how to knit a sweater vest. I jotted down three ways I could approach this pattern based on how many steps it would take, how much weaving there'd be, and personally how many new techniques I need to read up on in order from easiest to somewhat challenging. One, it could be worked completely flat. The front and back would be knitted separately before stitching them together at the side and shoulder seams. Then pick up stitches in the round to do the ribbing on the v-neck and armholes. The second method is working from the bottom up in the round. With this method, there are no side seams. The remainder of the front and back is worked flat separately before attaching them at the shoulder seams. And like method number one, I'd pick up stitches in the round for the armholes and v-neck. The last method I roughly read about is to knit from back to front as one piece. I could work the whole piece flat and only attach it at the side seams. So I'd begin knitting from the back, then pick up stitches to work the front. And like the other two methods, I'd pick up stitches in the round for the armholes and v-neck. I'll be showing method number two, working from the bottom up in the round, then flat. Now I made my own pattern from scratch using Excel to have a fully visual pattern. I sized my vest based on my bust and waist circumference to begin and other measurements I'll mention throughout. But I know that that's not for everyone and I'll link some free patterns I reference for anyone interested in the description. And as always, timestamps and chapters are listed. And any knitting methods that I couldn't cover or reference, I'll link those videos in the description as well. Onto my materials, I ended up using using two and a half balls of white yarn and half a ball of red to make the sweater. For both yarns, they required a four millimeter needle, which I'll use to knit the body of socket knit. For the ribbing, I'll go down a size and knit with a three millimeter needle for it to be tight and stretchy. Using the long tail cast on method, I'm going to cast on 252 stitches. That's roughly 115 centimeters. To start, drape the yarn over the needle with the yarn from the ball in the back. Using my thumb and index finger, I'll spread the yarn tails apart. I'll tension the rest of the yarn from the ball with my other three fingers. I'll bring my needle down to the front hanging yarn and pick it up. Then I'll bring my needle back and wrap it around the yarn before bringing it forward. Now with the yarn I've picked up from the front, there's a loop going around my thumb. I'm going to pass my needle through the loop and let go of the yarn on my thumb. And finally pull both yarn tails tight on the needle. In the beginning, I've casted on two stitches. As I continue with these steps, I'll cast on one stitch at a time. I'm going to join my stitches in the round using the magic loop method to create an invisible join. This requires an additional stitch to be casted on in order to create the join. First, I'll make sure none of my stitches are twisted. Then with my needles and stitches ready, I'm going to slip that first cast on stitch purlwise onto my right hand needle. Then I'm going to take that additional stitch I casted on and pass it over and off my left hand needle. Next, I'll slip that original stitch back onto my right hand needle before tightening up. Now I'm left with the join and I can slip on my stitch marker before I begin knitting my pattern. Starting with the 1x1 one one rib, I will work a knit one purl one till I've reached my stitch marker indicating the start of my next row and continue for 18 rows or until it roughly measures 5 centimeters. Since it's knitted in the round, I'm only knitting on the right side of my work. I'll be reading my pattern by identifying the horizontal purl bumps and knit slants. Once I've reached 18 rows, I'm going to go up a needle size to 4 millimeters to begin the stockinette with the same stitch count. For stockinette, I'll just keep knitting until I've reached my design length and row count before casting off to shape the armhole and v-neck. Another dividing stitch marker is placed to indicate the v-neck. Before the start of the next row, the pattern will indicate how many stitches need to be casted off before and after the stitch marker on both sides. After that, I transferred the front stitches to another needle of the same size to separate the front and back. I'll begin working on the back and shape my armhole according to my pattern. I'll knit one before using a SSK decrease for my left leaning decreases and a knit two together for my right leaning decreases when three stitches remain on a knit row until the pattern tells me to stop decreasing. From here on out, I'll be knitting sock and then flat. So on the right side row, I'll be knitting across and on the flip side, I'll be purling across. On this trial pattern, I'll be casting off on row 168, measuring 56 centimeters long. Moving on to the front, the armhole will be worked the same as the back, but now I'll be knitting the v-neck decreases simultaneously. Starting on the left v-neck, picking up where I'd left off, I'll purl across before beginning my armhole and v-neck decreases. When I cast off, I'll have 20 stitches left, roughly 9 centimeters wide. 
For the cast off, I'll knit 2 stitches onto my right hand needle, then bring the outer stitch over and off my needle, and knit 1 before passing it over again till I reach the end of my row. I'll leave a long enough tail to seam later. Once the front v-necks are done, I've gone ahead and dry block the pieces off screen. I'm going to seam the front and back together at the shoulder seams using the mattress stitch to create an invisible horizontal seam. Grabbing my darning needle and with the help of a needle threader, I'll pass the yarn easily through the eye of the needle. I'll start by bringing the cast off yarn tail into the edge of the front shoulder to begin the stitch evenly. Now I'll pick up the top V of the stockinette from the left, pull my yarn tight, and find the same first V on the right. I'll be working up the ladder like this till the end. When done right, the v-neck braids of stockinette should line up accordingly. I'm going to retrieve my 3mm needle to start picking up stitches in the round for the armhole ribbing. I'll be picking up stitches and knitting beginning from the cast off. I'll be going into the center of the V and pull the yarn through and work my way up and around the armhole. Moving past the cast off, I'll be picking up the edge stitch of my stockinette following the gaps in between stitches. On the wrong side, it'll just be a single column of stockinette that would otherwise curl in on the work flat. I picked up 126 stitches on my left armhole, so I'll be sure to pick up the same number of even stitches to knit in the round. Like my bottom ribbing, I'll be doing a knit one purl one for the armhole and v-neck I'll cast off on row 16, that's roughly 5 to 7 centimeters. Lastly, onto the v-neck, it's similar to the armhole, the only difference is shaping the v-neck on the center front. To create the center braid, I'll follow my pattern and knit until one stitch before the center stitch. Then with my working yarn in the back, I'll slip the next two stitches onto the right hand needle knitwise. I'll knit or purl the following stitch according to the pattern before passing the two slip stitches over and off the needle. From there, I'll continue knitting in the round until I come back to it on every row till the cast off. The last thing to do is to weave in all the yarn tails. For one by one rib, I'll be weaving the yarn tail into the rib braid by twisting around and passing the needle through. And just like that, I've knitted my first sweater vest. This took 3 days to pattern and about 34 days of somewhat consistently knitting, but it's still a work in progress. I'll definitely improve the pattern and knit more vests. These videos and projects definitely take a lot of time and effort to put together. Anyway, thanks for watching and till next time.